What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on creating a city inside of SketchUp. Um, so if you remember last week, I started a series where I'm just gonna go through and model a downtown area of a city um, and uh, kind of walk you through what I'm doing. So one of the things we're gonna try to do when we do this is we're gonna try to use SketchUp best practices and uh, things to really uh, make your model run faster. If you're looking for more great SketchUp tips make sure to check out my best SketchUp tips guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a lot of different things we need to do in order to make this more of like a uh, downtown area. So if you remember in the last video, what we did is we brought in um, the city of Castle Rock, Colorado, or at least part of it using the extension Placemaker. And the other thing I did with Placemaker is I added some high resolution near map images just so I could see what was going on in here. Now I will say you don't have to do any of that in order to model a city like this, um, but I did find it helpful. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to come in and we're going to use street view imagery to start roughing out the shapes of our buildings in this downtown area. So like for example right now if you were to walk down this downtown area you wouldn't really get a whole lot of um, like you wouldn't really get the feel of a downtown area just because there's no details on the buildings or anything like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going through and trying to add detail to this particular building building um, using street view photos from Google Maps. So the first thing we're going to do is you can see how I've got all of these blocky buildings in here and these are great for context models but they're not necessarily the best thing for actually modeling in detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click inside my buildings group so you can see how this is my buildings group that's created by placemaker and I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to click the button for hide. And so when I click the button for hide what this is going to allow me to do is this is going to allow me to really take a closer look at this building and kind of trace out the way this building would actually look and then apply some textures to it using the extension or using the street view imagery. So to start off what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of rough out this building shape um, using this imagery. And so you can see how what this building does right now is it just kind of continues along the green axis. And one thing I want to be a little bit careful of right here is remember that I took this image and I actually um, applied it to terrain. And so when I applied it to terrain, what that means is this isn't really flat right now. And so what I'm gonna do to start off is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rough out this building shape. But since I drew this um, on, since I drew this on terrain, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a little short edge that goes straight up. That way my line will actually go up above ground so I can actually see the plane that I'm creating. And you can see how what I'm doing is I'm just coming in here and I'm just kind of roughing out the shape of this building based on the map view that we have. So, and I'm gonna focus more specifically on the front of the building than the back of the building because we're not really gonna show an image of the back of the building, but I'm just gonna start off and I'm gonna rough out part this shape. So you can see how I'm able to do that just like this. And so one thing you might want to do, um, first of all, if you wanted to, you could turn on a you could turn on x-ray view so that you can kind of see through this face once you've created it. We're gonna push pull this building up to a certain height. And when I do this, I do want to make sure that I'm kind of separating this building based on where that building cutoff is in my uh, in my map view. And the only reason I say that is because what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to kind of separate these faces in here. And so you can kind of tell just by looking at this image where the building separations are. So you can see how the roof kind of changes right here. So obviously the building changes a little bit there. Um, and then the same thing happens right over here. Um, you can see how there's kind of a transition between buildings. And so what you can do is you can draw just a little line off of this edge wherever we think that that is. Um, and what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go back in and I hid that face that was in here. I'm gonna unhide it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pull up a street view of this street. And so you can see how in this street view, we've got kind of a taller building on the end, and then we've got some shorter buildings over here. And we're gonna take this image 
and we're going to use the snipping tool in order to create a copy of it. So I'm just going to go in there, I'm going to click new, and I'm just going to take a copy of this image right here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to save that. And so what we want to do is we want to look at this building and try to figure out how tall it is so we know how far to push pull this up. Like for example, if I look at this door, I can assume this is a seven foot door. And so I can ask myself how many times would I stack a seven foot door to get to the top of this parapet. So I'm assuming one, two, so maybe three doors, maybe a little bit less. So this is gonna be somewhere between 20 and 22 feet, something like that. So probably what we would do is we would come in here and we'd start off and for this building, we would push pull that up about 22 feet. For this building, probably about the same. This one might be a little bit shorter, so maybe 16 feet and then this one's going to be even taller so we're just going to use that to figure out how tall each one of these building pieces needs to be in here so i'm going to start off and you're probably going to want to go ahead and split this face but we're going to push pull this first one up to a height of that one's probably that one's probably about 28 feet high so we're just going to push pull this box up to about 28 feet and so we've push pulled this one up to what we think the height is. And then we're going to go back and we're just going to do the same thing for these other ones as well. So, so we'll just draw a line across there. And then a line across here. And you can tell what I'm doing is I'm just kind of roughing out the size of this building. So like this one, I'm going to assume this one's probably got a parapet height of about 16 feet. This one seems like it goes a little bit higher, so we're going to push pull that up to the to probably a height of 20, we'll say 20 feet. And then this other one's about the same height, so we'll push that pull that up to about 20 feet as well. And so really what I'm doing is just kind of roughing out this shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to apply a material to this face. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to import that image that I just saved of downtown Castle Rock as a texture. So we'll just go to File, Import, and we'll go down to All Supported Image Types. And then we're going to find our image of downtown Castle Rock, and we're going to import that as a texture. And so when I do that, you can see how what this is going to allow me to do is this is going to allow me to kind of... Uh, rough out the size of this texture and you can see how it doesn't really align right now that's okay because we're going to come back in and align it and resize it so you can see how what i did is i took that image and i applied it to this first face well now i'm going to right click on this and in my texture i'm going to go down to the option for position texture and what position texture is going to do is that's going to allow me to place this texture along this face and one thing that i want to do when i do this is i don't want to do this using um these pins so you can see how the, if I right click on this there's an option here for fixed pins well I don't want these to be fixed pins I want these to be pins that I can place on the corners of this texture image so you can see how these pins are movable I want to be able to put these on each corner of the building so you can see how I'm single clicking and then moving these to place them and then I want to be able to click and drag them so that they align with this face. So you can see how this is allowing me to kind of fine adjust my building so that it lines up with this face in here. And then I can go ahead and hit the enter key. And what that gives me is this gives me a building or this gives me an image applied to this face of what this building is gonna look like. And so we're gonna go back and we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna sample that material and we're gonna apply that one right here. And the nice thing about this one is since this building is basically the same height, we don't have to make a whole bunch of changes. So you can see how all I have to do is go in here and find the corners of the building and then click and drag this to apply it to the face. And so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do this for these other two faces and then uh, we can come back in here and talk about kind of what the next steps look like.
All right, and so what that did is that allowed us to kind of place these textures on the front of these buildings right here. Well, now what I want to do is I want to go get the texture for the side of this building. And so in order to get the texture for the side, I'm just going to go back to my street view. I'm just going to move down the road a little bit um, so that we're sitting right here. And we're just going to take the side of this building and we'll go ahead. You could probably come down here here just a little bit to get a little bit better perspective of the whole side of the building. I'm not going to focus too much on what this part of the building looks like because really we're trying to model the downtown part over here. But we can go ahead and come in here with our snipping tool. I'm just do a new snip. And the snipping tool should be something that's contained in most new Windows computer. And we're just going to take this and save this. So I'm just going to call this raw image 2. And we're just going to go up to File, Import, and import that as a texture, just like we did with the other textures on the front face. And so one thing I noticed when I'm looking at this is this gets a little bit tricky because this building changes heights about halfway through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to escape out of this for a second, and I'm going to go find a point on my map where this building looks like it changes heights. So in this case, this building kind of looks like it changes heights about here. So I'm just going to split this building because this building needs to get shorter on the back side. So we're going to come in here and we're just going to push pull this down a little bit. But then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to place each one of these individually. So like for this part of the building, I'll just click and drag these like this. I'll click and drag this to right here. And I'll click and drag this one to right here. So you can see how that building texture gets applied nicely along here. I haven't decided how I'm going to model this upper part yet. That's why I'm just placing this on the flat area of the building. Um, but then we're just going to do the same thing over here. We'll just place this right here. And one thing we could do if we really wanted to is we could come in here and we could add some detail to this. So you can see how I could drag this across like this. And then I could split the building face up. And then you could just split this roof face. To add some detail. so that you get these ups and downs that are actually found in the building. So you can see how I can use this in order to create that detail on this building. And that's probably one other thing I'm going to do over here, at least in a couple cases, is um, first of all, the nice thing about this is now that we have our texture kind of placed, and this one I think needs a little bit of extra work, but now that we have our texture kind of placed, We can push pull this roof face up in order to give it a little bit of extra thickness. And that texture is going to move along with it. So what that means is I can move this roof up and you can see how since this texture is applied to this face, as I make this taller, this is just kind of still applied on here. Well, Now I can come in and do the same thing I just did where I can take the front of this building and I'm just kind of using this to kind of rough out what this might be but I could come in here and I could draw a curved face like this a little shorter one right here and then maybe use the move tool in copy mode to copy this across and do the same thing over here in order to kind of generate what that shape might be. You might push pull it back just enough to give you kind of a parapet. 
And then probably what I would do is, and you can't push pull this down with the push pull tool um, because this is being blocked right here. But what you can do is if you remember the push pull tool has a create new face mode that you can turn on by tapping the control key. And so you could just move this down. You could push pull it down to this height. And what you've done is you've created an extra copy of that face. And then you could just come in and erase out this edge or this line. And you do need to be a little bit careful. Whoops. You need to be a little bit careful with what you erase out so you make sure that you have all your right faces in here. But you can see how I can come in here and just kind of erase all of this extra. And what that leaves me with is that leaves me with my building right here that actually has the shape of what the top would look like. And probably what I would do is I would find some kind of color. maybe like this color zero two and just apply it to the top of this face just so you don't have that weird pixelated stuff going on in here and so you can see how all I'm doing is I'm just using these textures to kind of rough out what these buildings would look like and from here we have a couple different options like for example if we wanted to we could come in here and we could actually model out the details on all of these buildings um, so we could model in the doors and the windows and that sort of thing we could also just come in here and continue to add the rest of this street using just textures like we did here. And one thing I do want to point out is because I modeled this above the terrain, once you have this whole building in here the way you want it, you'd probably want to take the whole thing and make it a group and then maybe move it down a little bit so that it's actually sitting on this ground face. So, and you might have to do a little bit of moving around of things in order to really make them line up the way that you want them to. Um, in this case, I'm not super worried about being 100% detailed on that, but you can see how this building now sits in here. It gives me a much better view and look as to what that building is gonna look like if you were to walk through downtown. So, and then we could also do the same thing here where we could push pull this up. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna push pull this up a little bit until I get to the top of this parapet. And then I'm just gonna come in here, I'm just gonna draw a line about where this splits. So about where the overhang starts. So about right there. And then you could take these and you could actually push pull them out a little bit. You can see how I can kind of use that texture right here to see where that would end. All right, and so once you've got this kind of roughed out, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna take this whole face and I'm gonna push pull it up. Because really what's going on here is you've got a flat overhang that hangs out and then you've got a whole bunch of different support pieces underneath here. And I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna model out the support pieces or not. I really haven't decided what level of detail I want this downtown model to get into. But to start off, this is a quick way to start adding that context in here. Once you do that, you can kind of figure out how much detail you want to go into. So um, I could come in and add all the different supports running along this face or I could not just depending on what I feel like doing. So hopefully this is starting to make sense. Like I said, this is a great way to start adding the context of your downtown model um, into your SketchUp model. From here, if you want to, you can go in and model this with much more detail, or you can just kind of leave this as is. A lot of it just depends on what you're trying to do. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you like the direction this is going, if you're finding these videos helpful. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.